Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Joelle Chen, my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at NYU. And it is my honor and privilege to congratulate you all and welcome you all to NYU Home for the Weekend alumni panel today. I just wanna take a second to again, offer my congratulations. You all probably are feeling so many different emotions right now, but really I hope that you are so proud of all of your accomplishments that have led to this point. So today you will hear stories from our incredible alum about how an NYU education prepared them for successes after graduation. They'll talk about how their experiences inside and outside of the classroom propelled them into the next chapter and helped them leverage their talents and skills for the professional world. And that's something that I am probably a little bit biased about because I myself am a proud NYU alum. I graduated from our College of Arts and Science where I majored in cinema studies, minored in anthropology and religious studies, and I'm currently in an NYU Gallatin master's program. So NYU has not yet been able to get rid of me. And what attracted me to NYU, what kept me going and what made me wanna work here after graduation is that I never felt limited in my education. Came in as a journalism major, loved the program, loved the department, but realized didn't quite love journalism, wasn't for me. And I didn't feel like I had to stay in a major, but was able to explore through minors, electives, so many different course offerings that when it came to declaring major, I had so many options. I was a little bit overwhelmed. It was like, not sure exactly which program do I choose? But that's a good problem to have, to be able to feel well-rounded in your academic experiences, but also to dive deep into a topic that you're passionate about. And my NYU experience was very much about that, being able to write an honors thesis where I explored the stereotypes of African-American women in film. To be able to travel the world to explore my academic interests from a semester in London, a summer break in Paris, short-term study away uh, trips to Abu Dhabi, Accra, Ghana, Florence, Italy. To do research, to work part-time jobs on campus. And it was actually a part-time job that led me to where I am now working as an admissions ambassador in our Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I was able to give campus tours, to talk with prospective students, to answer their questions. And I realized I loved doing that. I loved being able to guide people as they determine something that's so important, where they'll be attending higher education, where they'll be spending the next three, four years of their lives really exploring who they are, what they're interested in, and what their future might have going forward. And so that led me to where I am now, that I was one of many of our admissions officers who was able to read your applications, read your essays, get to see what it is that you're doing outside of the classroom, to see your academic performance, but also to be on those phone calls when you're calling the office and you're not sure if you submitted what you needed to, to be hosting virtual information sessions where we're able to guide students and a lot of first generation students, first in their families about the college application process when otherwise they might not have all of the information they need to apply. And that's why I love my career, to be able to guide you all through this process to determine whether or not NYU is the best fit for you. And it's okay if it is, and it's okay if, it not, if it's not, but that's what we're here for. And while I've been able to work at NYU, I've also been able to do an NYU graduate degree. So how awesome is that, that I'm able to work in a job that I love, but also to be able to study and continue my studies in film and history and racial justice and activism while being able to explore academic interests of mine. So that's a little bit about my NYU story. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. I could probably spend multiple hours just talking about everything that I got into in my NYU experience. But I think you'll also be really excited to hear from our panelists in a few minutes to really get what their NYU story was all about. So we hope that you'll leave this session inspired by their journeys and excited about NYU being your potential home this fall. But before we go any further, I do want to share a couple of housekeeping items. So please note that all attendees will be muted throughout the duration of this webinar, and we will not cover any admissions or financial aid information today. But if you do have any questions about the application process, visit our website, give us a call. We open bright and early 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at Monday, or send us an email if you have any questions. 
our staff is ready and available to help you with any questions or concerns you might have. And even though we can't see your faces today, you definitely can see mine, hopefully, we definitely want to give you an opportunity to join the conversation. So if you have questions, and I think a couple of you already do, which is awesome, for our panelists or myself, use the chat in the platform. We have staff members and alums who are answering your questions behind the scenes. And if for some reason I get disconnected, one of our staff members will step in on my behalf. All right, so let's get started. And over the course of this weekend, you'll have the opportunity, if you haven't already, to attend one of our school spotlights where you'll hear all about the academic offerings of your specific school. And at NYU, the experiences in the classroom are incredible. I remember taking a class with uh, a professor in the music department in the College of Arts and Science my first year called Village Music, where we got to explore the village and understand the folk and Americana revival of the 1960s. And every single class we were walking through the city or exploring the city and what it had to offer and teach us. I had classmates that were taking classes that required them to go see an exhibit that their professor put together at the Met or to go uptown or outside of the Manhattan borough to utilize the resources of the city. So the classes are incredible, but we also recognize that there's practical knowledge that you can gain outside of the classroom. And that's so valuable as it really helps prepare our students for the next chapter. So at our Wasserman Center for Career Development, students have access to a number of resources to help them find internships, on-campus jobs, and other professional opportunities. And this includes everything from resume reviews to make sure that you figure out how to put everything you've done in one page resume. Trust me, it's harder than it sounds. It offers you know, professional coaching to practice for interviews that you might have, advising, and NYU Handshake which is a database of jobs and internships accessible anywhere NYU has a presence and beyond. And I wanna emphasize anywhere. It's not just United States, it's really a global presence, meaning that if you decide to study away in one of our sites in Madrid, you could potentially have an internship while there. And that really prepares our students for a global market. So our Wasserman Center for Career Development offers diversity internship and career preparation programs as well that are designed to prepare students from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds for the professional world. And they help them develop job search, search excuse me, and networking skills that will help them secure internships. At the end of every graduation year, Wasserman actually surveys graduating seniors. And this past year reported that 93% of our students participated in at least one internship or job during their time at NYU. And in 2019, 95% of our graduates were working or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. And 59% of those students, over half, had secured a job through an NYU resource. So in addition, our NYU alumni network is incredibly strong. With over 600,000 alum all over the world, it's not hard to find a violet, no matter where life might take you. So speaking of our alumni network, I am so honored to be joined by some amazing alums and that we have an incredible panel in store for you all. So I'm gonna have our panelists introduce themselves. And panelists, after I mention your name, please share a little bit about yourself. You know, tell us your major, year of graduation. And I know that our audience is really interested in what you're up to now. So I am going to start with Dimitri. Sure thing, y'all. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name is Dimitri Henry. I was NYU class of 2019. I studied political science with a minor in public policy and management, uh, that major being in CAS and that minor being in the Wagner School of Public Service and the Stern School of Business. Uh, currently, I, I work at S&P Global as a sustainable finance analyst. And as an alumni member of the community, I am um, in the recent alumni network where I, I sit proudly to, to help um, bring community with recent alumni and also make sure that I, I join wonderful panels like this to speak with y'all. And we are so, so happy that you're here and joined us today, Dimitri. Thank you so much. Devin, I'm gonna go along to you. 
Hi, um, I'm Devin McLeod. I graduated from the Stern School of Business in 2017 with a concentration in management and organizations. And I minored in uh, European and Mediterranean studies in the College of Arts and Sciences. I currently work at the New York City Ballet as their coordinator for major gifts and their own patron circle program. Um, and as an alumni, I am the co-chair of the Black and Latinx um, Alumni Association at Stern. Thanks, Devin, for being here. And already, you both are such great examples of NYU students always having an extra academic interest. Major in something, and then they have decided, you know what, I just have a random interest that I want to explore and minor in. Very, very NYU. I'm going to pass it on to Michael. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you today um, in this very exciting period of your life as you prepare for university. I graduated from the Gallatin School of Individualized Study in 2016. I had a concentration in law and society, and I had a minor in Steinhardt's media culture and communication. After graduation, I spent three and a half years at Goldman Sachs in leadership, de and leadership development and in diversity and inclusion training. Um, and I'm now a first year law student. And I'm still involved with NYU. Similarly with Dimitri, um, I serve on the NYU Alumni Association Board of Directors and chair the Alumni Weekend Committee. Thanks, Michael. And thank you also for spending some time on weekend as a first year law school. I have been told by numerous friends that you don't actually have any time, so I am impressed. Thank you. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, Carolyn. Everyone, happy Saturday afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Carolyn and I'm originally from San Jose, California. Shout out to anyone from the Bay Area that's joining us today. Um, and I graduated from NYU Steinhardt class of 2016. I majored in media, culture and communication and I minored in the business of entertainment, media and technology, which is a tri-school joint um, minor between Steinhardt, Tisch and Stern. Um, after I graduated in 2016, I had a very brief stint in higher education at NYU, actually, before realizing that my true interests were in talent acquisition. And so I worked at Square, which is a fintech company, for three and a half years before recently switching to tech recruiting at Figma, which is a design startup. Thank you, Carolyn. And also thank you for that Steinhardt swag there. I'm sure if I asked any of our panelists to find some NYU gear, you could probably get it really quickly. Uh, I won't challenge you to do that right now, but maybe just prepare yourself, prepare yourself for that. Um, but thank you all again for being here. And panelists, as a reminder, please be sure to use the raise hand function so that I can call on you and have you share your amazing insight. And so the first question I have, I actually want to take it back, take it back a couple of years to when we were applying to NYU and to all of the incredible colleges and universities we apply to. And I want to hear about your journey to NYU and what ultimately drew you to this university. So take a second. I know we're all dating ourselves, except for Dimitri. It's a little bit <laughs> current for you of going back. A bit. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Joelle, for um, taking us back 10 years, which I right. hate to admit at this point. Um, you know, before I really started to think about where I was going to go to school, I thought, I'm not going to New York. That's not the place for me. It's too big, um, too intimidating. But as I started to think more critically about what I wanted from a university and do research, two things stuck out in my mind about NYU. And that was one, the experiences and opportunities that I would get from being in a city like New York. So I figured, okay, I'll give it a try. Um, and then the second, as I'm sure everyone's very familiar, was the global nature of NYU, um, which was really coming to fruition in 2011 when I applied. So those were the two things that motivated me to really consider going to NYU and then um, I know many of you may not have had this experience, but being on campus, you just get the sense of the energy um, that is on NYU's campus, which is also, you know, just Greenwich Village <laughs> in Manhattan. Um, and there's something ineffable about it, but 
it just being there uh, and walking around and, and seeing students and meeting people, I, I knew this was the place that I needed to be. Absolutely. There definitely is an energy. I didn't say it earlier. I am a proud resident of the DMV or former resident. So that's DC, Maryland and Virginia. Shout out to them. And any time that I drove into the city and you cross that bridge or you get out that tunnel, your heart just skips a beat a little bit. It really just has this power on campus. So hopefully a lot of folks, if you haven't visited already, obviously due to pandemic quarantine conditions, hopefully you'll be able to visit over the summer or potentially soon. But I see Devin and Dimitri have hands up. Gonna go with Devin first. <laughs> Sorry, Dimitri. <laughs> um, hilariously, um, I was the exact opposite of Michael. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to go or that I was going to go to NYU, if I want to be honest, um, when I was about four. <laughs> My parents, I'm from upstate New York by Syracuse. Um, and my dad has a lot of business in the city. And so we used to come down like once a month. And my parents love to talk about how when I was young, I used to just like navigate the city as if I lived here my whole life. Like just something about it clicked in my spirit from the time I stepped foot and could like actually walk. Um, and when I was little, we used to hang out a lot in Greenwich Village in the West Village. Um, and I used to just point at the purple flags because purple was my favorite color, still is. Uh, I would just be like, I want to go to that school. Like, seriously, like so ridiculous, but true. <laughs> and so as I got older, um, I originally wanted to go to Tisch because um, I come from a family of dancers. I'm a dancer myself. I was thinking I would just kind of pursue that. And then around my sophomore year of high school, once you start actually thinking about college, like for real, for real, um, I was like, actually, you know, I feel like I've got the dance thing. I should really do something I can't get from like my family, from my own background. Let me like think about business school. It's like, oh, NYU has a business school. I didn't understand Stern. I didn't really know much about Stern beyond it was the business school at, at NYU. Um, freaked my guidance counselors out when I said this was the only school I'd be applying to. Um, I decided if I didn't get in, I would apply until I did. <laughs> that was literally, that was it. Um, they didn't believe me and here we are. So <laughs> that, was my, that was my journey. It was NYU or die for me and luckily it all worked out. <laughs> I love that. That's very NYU energy of I'm going to keep applying until I get that answer that I want. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm gonna pass it along to you. Sure, sure. And, and I think I was, my reasoning was a little bit different. Um, I came from a very small town in New Jersey called Flemington. It's got around, I don't know, something like 4,000 people in the, in the, in the town. Um, and you know, going to New York as a city, it's quite large. Like it's 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 huge. Um, I currently live in in, in Brooklyn, and, but uh, when I was arriving there, um, what struck me most and why I felt like I, I wanted to come to to NYU for my for my education was, was the opportunity. I, I tell this to everybody who asks about NYU. There's no other city in the world where you can go from your dorm to the UN down to Battery Park, all the way up to the Met, all the way over to fi the financial district for less than $10 on the subway. There, there just simply isn't another city in the world. And so that opportunity for someone that was in a town where our, our senior prank was, was bringing tractors to school, it was very small. That was something that I, I had to have. And if I I'd highly encourage y'all, if, if, if that's something that you're looking for, that opportunity to, to really get exposed to everything, <laughs> everything the world has to offer in a single city. Yeah, NYU certainly has that and more. I think opportunity is such a good word to describe NYU as a whole and kind of transitions to our next question. Uh, so thank you all so much for sharing kind of about how you got to NYU. But while you were there, were there any opportunities or clubs on campus that really allowed you to gain skills and experiences that are helping you in the workplace now or graduate school? Yeah, Carolyn. I'll take this one since I didn't answer the first question. Um, so funny enough, I think all four of us were quite active on campus during our time at NYU. Um, Michael, Dimitri, and myself were all um, coincidentally involved in the class activities board, which is known as the programming body for our respective classes. 
Um, so for example, I was the president of the class of 2016 class activities board, and we were responsible for planning really fun social programs ranging from like almost like a winter formal type of activity to senior week, which is a week of marquee events to celebrate, you know, the seniors that are graduating and things like that. And so that was a really great time, not only to build my, you know, personal network of friends and build a community, but I also gained a lot of great skills that I'm still using today. Um, you know, Michael and I would have to send out emails to thousands of students to the class of 2016, which is a really scary thing to hit send <laughs> and, and, you know, pre prepping like meeting agendas, for example, or um, working on day of plans and just planning events for a large scale, you know, population. Um, it's really come in handy in a lot of different scenarios, um, even at work, though I, I, by day I'm a recruiter, there's a lot of events and conferences I have to attend. And so there's a lot of planning involved. So um, whether you realize it or not, if any of you decide to get involved with student life, you will take away some really valuable connections, friendships, and hard and soft skills that will be really beneficial after you graduate too. Thanks, Carolyn. And I already told you this, but I got those 2016 emails and they were great, so. I can confirm you did a good job there. <laughs> Michael, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Yeah, I, I'm, but I'll, I'll build a little bit on what Carolyn said, because as she mentioned, we had similar experiences. Uh, I was also involved in student government um, and ended up being the vice chair and then chair in my senior year of our student government, which let me just put into perspective, out of school like NYU means that you are the president of the student body for 50,000 students all over the world. Yeah. That's an amazing experience, an amazing opportunity. And that's the type of thing that NYU opens the door to. Those are the opportunities that you have. They're just on such an amazing scale. Um, and so being interested in law and policy, it was a great opportunity for me to think about how to create policy decisions and how to represent this huge student base um, that I just, I don't think I would have gotten this opportunity anywhere else. And as Carolyn said, that led to amazing hard and soft skills. Uh, like, you know, when I got to my first job, I realized that not everyone else had experience creating agendas, taking meeting minutes, drafting really, you know, important emails, um, even small things like sending calendar invites to people. Like those are very minute things that I learned because I was involved in this huge student government apparatus that we had at um, NYU. And then on top of that, as Carolyn was saying, I developed an amazing network, both of friends, um, but that I still, you know, am in touch with today, but also really amazing um, professional connections who both connected me with my first job at Goldman Sachs and also, you know, advised me as I think about my career in the law and, and studying law and then what I'll do after that. So it's just really an invaluable place to, to get experiences like that. That network piece is so important too. I feel like I'm gonna make an assumption that all of us probably have an NYU friends group chat where you're still chatting with your friends and they're connecting you with folks and Violets take care of each other. It's always good to see. Devin. Yeah, um, I really wanted to also talk about, I mean, I was also on class activities board and I loved it. Um, I was uh, the representative for the 1831 fund which was a student run scholarship committee um that when I joined we had like 50 seniors it was really a senior fund like 50 seniors gave and by the time we graduated we had um 51 percent of the senior class um had given so that kind of like very tangible um growth it's something you can show to jobs it's one of the reasons I got my job at New York City Ballet in the development department um that was student run us talking with you know the vice president of NYU, us having to figure out how to be students, but also run something that was very tangible, that was very much um, very important, <laughs> making sure that students were getting um, the support they needed directly from other students. Um, so something like that, it was, as you said, very tangible skills <laughs> that you could, that I was lucky to um, apply in my job up until today. And also those kind of connections um, brought me 
to be able to work on this term diversity, equity, and inclusion task force that was brought together when I was a junior, when Stern as a school decided it was really time for them to do the on the ground policy work as to how to make Stern specifically you know, within NYU a more accessible place, um, a place where no matter where you come from, you feel like you belong, you can find a place um, for yourself within your academic life. Um, and I was very much able to create change as a student, mm -hmm. sitting with only two other students, with deans, with all of these people. And that's one of the things NYU really allows for their students to do if they have, I guess, the drive to be able to find those places to make true impact. And I think that that's what brings people to NYU is, you know, you're a person who's looking to make change, whether it's even just on yourself and the people around you or at a big institutional level. And doing all that kind of policy work, institutional change was something I was able to bring into my career. And, you know, I know it's going to be at the foundation of my career for the rest of my life. So. Thank you so much for sharing. I can already tell that NYU was definitely better because of your work and all of the things that you were engaged with. I'm like keeping track. This is definitely more than a one page resume already. Dimitri, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted, I know that we, we spent some time on this, but it really is just so important for the, the participants to know that you, you wanna think about a school that isn't necessarily suited for you today, but the few you wanna be. And I think that's so very important because growing up, my my hometown, very small. I I was more of a on the introverted side. I didn't very I didn't do much. Uh, I was uh, very much just stayed at home and, and kind of like played chess. Still play chess now. Love it. But at the end of the day, when I reflect upon my time at NYU, I knew I wanted to be somebody, and I and like bear with me, y'all, it sounds cliche, but I wanted to be somebody that could have an impact on my community and, and the world that I operate in. And NYU gave that's almost an intangible skill that you that you learn from, from coming to NYU. It, it pulls you out into positions where you start to, you, you change, you grow, you evolve. And so you thinking about where you will be and where you want to be is something that you should definitely do. And I think NYU did did that for me 10 times over and I'm, and I'm really thankful for it. Absolutely. Thank you all. I'm out here in a career and I'm still like taking down notes from y'all. So I hope our viewers are taking those too, getting these nuggets of wisdom. Uh, and thank you all again for sharing kind of this positive side of NYU, but I think of any institution, any place, there's good and there's bad as well. And so what I would love to hear from you all are some of the challenging aspects maybe of attending NYU and, and how you might have navigated that. And I know for me personally, while you think of it, Dimitri, a little bit like you were saying, I'm actually a very introverted person. And so coming to NYU forces you out of your comfort zone. And that was definitely a challenge for me of like, we have all of these resources, we have so much to do, that's great. But actually taking that step to take advantage of it, it was a little scary because you're, you're not used to that in maybe a smaller school or a smaller town and trying to figure out how to go about that, that was definitely a challenge for me. But how about you all? Yeah, Dimitri, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just tail in that because yeah, it was, it was hard. Like it's, yeah, we would be remiss to say that that transition wasn't wasn't something that we had to work on. Um, but that's something as part of the college experience that you do, you, you, you work on yourself and, and kind of in that vein of sort of working on ourselves. For me, one thing that was really difficult was um, I'm, I'm almost very, I'm very sort of indecisive. Um, and we, we talked about the, the point of having so many different resources to your disposal. Um, it's easy in a, in a city as big as this, a school as big as this, to, to feel that you're kind of drowning sometimes. And I, I think during my first year, um, I, I didn't have the right, the right guidance until I sort of reached out to my, my counselor, the Wasserman Center, some people that I considered mentors. Um, and so even though I did have that challenge of sort of figuring out the right sort of path to go down, and why you gave me the resources to do that. And that's, I think that's really important because it's important to have those 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 challenges and those sort of tribulations, but you need to surround yourself by the people that can get you over that. And I think NYU is, is more than capable of doing that. Thank you so much for sharing, Dimitri. 
Anyone else have anything to share with this question? Yeah, Carolyn. Uh, I think this will probably resonate with a few of you that may not have family in the immediate tri-state area or even on the East Coast for that matter. Um, I don't have any immediate or extended family members at all on this side of on the East Coast. Actually, my family and all of my like extern, like extended relatives are all in the Bay Area. So um, <laughs> I am still today uh, sort of jokingly referred to as the black sheep of the family for making such a huge decision at 18 or even 17 to um, move cross country by myself. And so um, I think in my first year, I was not missing family, but I was just more um, anxious about kind of those crazy scenarios. Like what if I do have an emergency for myself and I don't have someone that can immediately drive over, or I don't know if, if something happened to me, like who was my emergency contact? Like I didn't know who like my close friends were at that time. And so I think I had some expected fears in my first year, just being completely by myself. Um, but something that I learned really quickly um, and all, also obviously in my research before committing to NYU, um, it was very clear to me that you are not babied when you come to NYU. Um, you know, so there are pros and cons to that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it is sometimes isolating um, to, you know, be in your dorm room and not really know like who your network of friends are yet or like not having your family immediately there. Um, but what you realize is, you know, you, you walk outside of your dorm and like there's millions of other people out there living their lives and you just either sit there and, and you stay upset or you figure it out and you move forward. So I think that's my biggest takeaway during my time in New York, it's been eight and a half years now, is you just pick yourself up and you just keep on going. Um, and then ultimately you'll realize that everyone around you is also going through similar things um, and they will be there and they will be your community. Absolutely, you learn your strength, I think at NYU, like you might not have realized where your strengths were in high school, but when you are put in this new situation that has incredible opportunities, but also those challenges, you learn your strengths and you learn that advocacy for yourself. Absolutely. I think Dimitri, you mentioned this a little bit and I do wanna to shift to another question about mentorship and how it was mentors that kind of helped you through those challenging times. So I'd love to hear from you all, where did you find mentorship or support from staff or faculty members in the NYU community? Devin, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think that when it came to mentorship for me, um, what I found by the time I graduated is that mentorship isn't something you can just like declare, <laughs> like this is my mentor, because it sometimes felt like that people would, you know, you have mentorship programs and all of that. And I kept being like, I'm not feeling connected to this person who's been declared my mentor. Like, what do I, what am I doing wrong? Basically, there's nothing yeah. wrong. It's <laughs> you finding mentorship is about trial and error. It's about building relationships. I attempted uh, to find, you know, mentors in a bunch of different professors, just like really going office hours, trying to speak to them, um, you know, about different issues as they were coming up or just trying to create, you know, connections. Um, and some of them just didn't stick. It was like, okay, this person is just not the person for me. They're, we're not clicking. They're not the one who's going to help me or the one, one of the ones <laughs> to help me on my path. Um, and then in the end, more than likely, you kind of trip into your mentors. <laughs> I found so many of my mentors from, you know, just clubs that I decided to join for fun or um, a friend of a friend who ended up going through something really similar to me. Um, you know, even the Dean of Stern, you know, I worked as a student worker just for money, I needed to, and ended up working in the Stern undergraduate offices. And from working, found all of these incredible mentors, women in power who had gone through a lot of the tribulations that I was going to be going through or was currently going through. Um, so I think that mentorship is about just like keeping your eyes open, not getting discouraged if the person that you thought was going to be the one and only is not it. <laughs> <laughs> just keeping your eyes and your heart open for people who click with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I completely agree with everything, Devin, that you said. Um, and just want to add that there is not a scarcity of people who can be mentors at the university, whether that's upperclassmen who are one or two years ahead of you, but kind of know the ropes and are willing to help you out. 
um, or professors. I know, I think someone had asked about, you know, being at such a large school. Um, as Devin said, like, if you're in a large class, you can go to office hours and talk to your professors. And that's a great way of forming relationships. There are also a lot of really small classes, um, especially in schools like Gallatin. And, and it's also, you know, as you get higher up um, uh, in your education, you'll have a lot of smaller classes and be able to develop faculty relationships. Um, mentors can also come from the administrators or staffs that you work with in your clubs or in student government. Um, so I, I think just the point that I really want to emphasize is that anyone from a fellow classmate or an upperclassman all the way up to the president of the university can be a mentor. Um, and, and it's <laughs> Dimitri, I see is laughing because I think he and I shared a mentor in um, the former president. So I, I'm not just saying that, you know, like yeah. this is NYU is full of people who will help you along the way and who will invest in you if you invest in yourself and reach out for help. Absolutely, especially the faculty members. I remember taking my senior thesis class. It was me, one other student and the chair of the cinema studies department. And so we got super close. After I graduated, the chair of the department was still sending me emails about, would you be interested in this? Or this is gonna be a great resource for you. And just knowing that someone who has all of this responsibility, all of these extra roles, care so much about the students and want to see them thrive. It's just like a very good comfort to know that even when you leave NYU, NYU is still kind of there to take care of you. So I do wanna to shift to about like two final questions for me and then get to the chat because I see a lot of questions. I see some activities. I also saw our DMV shout out, so hey. Uh, and shift to some fun questions such as what is your favorite NYU tradition? The Jeopardy like sound is going off right now. Michael, go ahead. It sounds so nerdy. Um, there is a dance party in our library, Boast, which if any of you have seen, it's a beautiful building. It's 12 floors. There's this great atrium. And every year as part of the um, Spirit Week, which yes, NYU does have, there is a tradition called the Violet Ball. Um, and it's a soiree at night. It's so much fun. It sounds crazy that we shut down the library to just have a dance party, but it happens and, and it's a lot of fun. Definitely super fun, especially if you do it like me, you study right before the ball starts, you go to your room and then you change and come right back. I, was, I actually planned it. Um, for a few years and was the person who had to like coordinate all of the lights shutting off and all of the people being like, no, I'm still studying. <laughs> so yeah, I, I saw quite a lot of Oh, any other favorite traditions, y'all? Go ahead, Dimitri. Sure. So this was this is more of a um, kind of it, maybe it's a little little nerdy or anything like that. But I was I was an RA uh, or an RCA um, at NYU, and I think one of my favorite traditions. I was an RCA for for two years at Third North, one of the largest um, uh, like dorms <laughs> like in in the country and at the university. It's about a thousand. I could tell you random facts about that building that I don't need to know. <laughs> They're still ingrained in my head. But one of the one of my favorite memories um, is move-in day. I mean, it's hectic for me and like I it was it was definitely a lack of sleep and and, and all that but seeing the first years come into the dorm excited to some the first time being away from their from home being away from parents others ready to seize the opportunity it's it's an energy that's that's infectious and so as somebody that i personally i i'm kind of like a rising tide lifts all ships if like i can help somebody raise their own sort of um reach their goals, I mean, that's intrinsically good for me. So um, seeing and allowing people to have that first day, move-in day um, experience with that first time in New York experience is something I, I, I treasure a lot. Always a fun memory. And Dimitri, I don't know if you saw in the chat, but there is someone who is hoping for Third North. So there is already Third North love out there. <laughs> Devin, go ahead. Uh, Dimitri actually brought back memory, a memory of Honestly, I loved Weekend on the Square. I was um, part of the Stern Street team, which is like the admissions team for Stern. And I really miss, I, I'm so glad to be part of like the virtual version because there is something so magical and 
infectious about being around, especially by the time you're a senior or a junior, around a bunch of admitted students who are walking around rem reminding you of how you felt and should probably still feel about NYU. It's the reason, I think one of the biggest reasons I kept loving NYU so much and to this day was just having that yearly reminder of like how special this place is and how magical it is and the fact that there are no walls around us. We're like, as we say, in and of the city. And I used to just like be so excited to put my street team t-shirt on and be that like super way too bubbly person <laughs> like outside of uh, Stern's Tisch Hall being like welcome students <laughs> it was just way too much fun and really kept the love of NYU alive over the four years <laughs> oh, you're bringing back memories for me as well truly my heartstrings are pulling just being around Washington Square seeing the violet balloons and you're just like this is our home this is our campus I have one final question for me and then we'll go to the chat because there's a lot of questions in there. But my last question is what is one piece of advice that you would give to our admitted students who might still be on the fence about deciding if they wanna attend NYU? Take a deep second, take that think. You're probably like, we already told you. <laughs> All of our questions have been to answer that exact question. Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll share a bit of advice that I got on my NYU tour. And I think, Joelle, we were talking about this. Yeah. We had similar advice. Um, NYU is not for everyone. You know, Carolyn was talking earlier that, you know, you're not babied at NYU and you are just stuck, you know, in Manhattan, in New York City, one of the largest and also best cities in the country. Um, and Devin, you were just, you know, talking about how we are in and up the city. There is no campus. Um, and if what you're looking for is the traditional college experience where you have a quad and where you have football games and, you know, everyone wears the same color on football games and you tailgate. Um, NYU is not going to be the place for you. And I'll just be super honest about that, because if that's what you want, you shouldn't come here. Um, you know, on the opposite side of that, we don't have gates. And that's amazing, because as Devin said, the city is our campus. You know, Dimitri was talking earlier, you can, after class, pop down to the World Trade Center or go up to Central Park. When I when needed to clear my head, I would walk to Central Park. Who thought I could do that as a freshman in university? Um, and I also just want to emphasize that it's such a diverse community and because we don't all wear the same colors on, you know, game days, because we don't even have game days, there's, we don't really have that macro community, but that gives you the opportunity to create the NYU community that you want. Um, whether that's, you know, people that you're in clubs with, whether that's people that you are living in the dorms with you get to shape your own community. Um, and if that is the experience that you want, something that's gritty, something that will challenge you, something that will make you, um, you know, challenge your assumptions about the world and, and make you a stronger person, then there is no place you should be except for NYU. Absolutely. That's all I have to say. <laughs> no, thank you, Michael. And yeah, just to echo that, you know, we don't have an NYU football team. Surprisingly, you can still buy an NYU football t-shirt at the bookstore. Haven't had a team since the 50s, but if you want to rep it, absolutely. But we still have our athletic teams and we still have those game nights. But what's so important, I think that you touched on is there's no one community that dominates the culture of NYU. So if you're an athlete, awesome. If you're in Greek life, awesome. If you're involved in like community service or cultural clubs, it's awesome. And you're able to find that community and you're able to make that community and know that there's other ways to find community as well. That there's no one path to having that NYU experience. And that was something that was so amazing for mine. Any final authors of advice for our, for our admitted students? I think Michael, Michael hit the nail on the head there. But I do see some questions in the chat, so I'm gonna open it up. Um, and I see a question 
from Mike, that kind of touches a little bit about what Michael was saying, but how do you determine if a big school like NYU is right for you? We talked about that a little bit about the transition, but does anyone have any advice for Mike about determining NYU, it's pretty big, is that the right fit? Yeah, Carolyn. Uh, okay, so because I work in the field of talent acquisition, which is to hire interns and new grads in particular, and also doing some full time hiring as well. Um, something that I always tell students that are sort of worried about whether to accept that first job with my company, for example, is to not be so focused on like the immediate present. Um, which is sometimes ironic because a lot of people are always thinking too far ahead. But what I mean is um, you get this interview question a lot, which I personally dislike, which is what is your five year plan. If someone asked me that in an interview, I would be like, dude, I don't even know what my five hour plan is. <laughs> like, I, I really just cannot tell you for the love of God what I want to be doing in five years. Um, but if you are, um, you know, you have some general ideas of where you want your career to go or where you want to be as an individual, both physically, mentally, and then also professionally, I would say that NYU really checks off all the boxes if you want to be challenged in a good way, and then also know that you will probably be pretty secure when it comes to the job hunt. Um, especially if you're looking to work in the tri-state area, the NYU network is so huge. And then beyond that, of course, we have a global network of over 500,000 alumni. So you will be comfortable everywhere. Um, but if I'm thinking realistically, as, a, as I have my recruiter capsule on, um, you know, the NYU network specifically in the greater New York City area is quite vast. And so, uh, you know, if you want to be working for a few years or maybe long term in New York, um, coming to a school like NYU is probably a good thing to do for your career. Thanks, Carolyn. And you actually touched on something, that global network that we've all kind of hinted at a little bit throughout this session. But we have a question from Joe Marie, who is asking, what was your experience like studying away if any of you participated? Dimitri, your hand went up so quickly. <laughs> Go ahead. Take, take over there. <laughs> Oh man, studying away. And I know there's those, those, those cliches when you're like, oh yeah, you studied away and that's all you can talk about. Well, yeah, cause it's amazing. It's all like, <laughs> it's awesome. And, and um, that being said, uh, I, I think I had the opportunity to study at uh, NYU Shanghai, NYU Berlin, NYU Accra, Buenos Aires and Washington DC. So I, I tried to make the most of my studying away experience at NYU because that, that global network is just another opportunity to, to just see the world and, and study and learn the, the, the culturally what the differences. And I think it, it, I'm so much more the better because of it. And to be fair, I can't roll my R's. I'm terrible at language, but being in a different place, that's almost so disorienting that you just don't know, like you have to focus on the people you go with, the people that you, you build this great bond with the people that you go studying away with. And I mean, I, some of my best friends are the people that I met that I have no business meeting in a random class in Shanghai or, or at a museum in, in, in Berlin. It, it really is incredible to say that when I think about sort of my relationships with the people I have now post as an alumni is that it truly spans six different continents I don't I don't unfortunately I don't have one in Antarctica but like I have the opportunity to to go anywhere to couch surf to see all my friends in almost every single continent and that's all because of the study away experiences that I had and I'm just I'm such a very big proponent of it so I'm sorry I didn't mean to be too too uh, <laughs> enthusiastic about it I don't think you can be too enthusiastic about studying away. It truly was one of my favorite experiences as well. Devin, go ahead. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. Um, didn't quite knock out as many places as Dimitri did, but um, I studied abroad in NYU Prague, which I kind of tripped into. Uh, there were only three places I could go with my um, class schedule in order to graduate on time. Um, and so, after doing like some trial and error, I decided I'm Prague. And it was the best five months still to this day. It's so cliche, it's so nerdy, but it's so true. Um, being at an NYU campus in the middle of Europe, um, it was just truly magical. I mean, we were traveling, me and my friends and brand new friends, people that you met just because this person's also going to Paris this weekend. So why don't we like split a hostel, <laughs> you know, and, you and then you become best friends. Um, and that kind of access 
absolutely would not have come to me without NYU. And I would have never gone to Prague, it was never on my radar um, until I ended up at NYU. And even built into core study, you can travel um, at Stern there is something called uh, the International Studies Program where every junior takes this class, it's a required class. And for a week over spring break, every student goes to the country that they've been studying all year. So we went to Vietnam. <laughs> so I went to Vietnam for a week and had never been to that part of the world. Wouldn't have probably been able to go to that part of the world without that course study. And now it's like one of my the best experiences I ever had. I went to Thailand after I graduated because I love Vietnam so much. And I have a group of people that every year we're like, we're going somewhere because we know we love to travel together because we studied abroad together. And we have our little group chat, like you said, <laughs> where we're constantly sending, especially now that like the world looks like sometime in the next year. Or so we'll be able to do that again. You know, we're just constantly sending each other like, you wanna go to Thailand? You wanna go to Colombia? Like, let's just go wherever because once you get that bug, it's really, really hard to shake. <laughs> Very much true. Anytime I talk to NYU friends and it's like, what, what are your regrets from your time there? It's always for those who didn't study away, not studying away of not taking a semester or even a January term because New York is closed for January. So you don't have to deal with blizzards if you don't want to. And you could study away in Abu Dhabi or you could study away in Accra or Buenos Aires or even for the summer, so many NYU friends who did not study away, that is, that's their regret of not taking advantage of it because it's so, so easy to do so. So I have two questions in the chat that I'm going to try to combine, but I have a question from Joshua Chang and they're asking, I have a question for the alum. Would you say it's pretty difficult or easy to get the classes you want at NYU? And another question from Mei Yi Song, who was asking, was it easy to explore your interests through your major and minor, particularly across schools and potentially even transferring schools? So kind of a two-part question, how was it getting the classes you were interested in and were you really able to explore your academic interests within your school or other schools? I know a couple of y'all said that you had minors. Michael is the poster child for interdisciplinary studies at Gallatin. So I know any of y'all want to want to tackle that one. Carolyn, go for it. Yeah, it's people are not going to like this answer, but it's really going to vary by the program mm -hmm. and like what you, year you are in school. Um, I remember back when um, I was first admitted to NYU, the Steinhardt School actually had their own admitted students orientation in July. So before you even came onto campus um, and they actually advertised that weekend as an opportunity to enroll in classes. But I remember there was a mad dash and almost a pressure to go to New York just for that. But um, even though I went to like kind of solidify my schedule, I ended up changing it anyway by the time I got to campus. So it's really gonna depend. Um, there are obviously going to be wait lists, especially for some of the general courses that are mandatory um, since we are a liberal arts college um, after all and have you know general requ requirements that we need to fulfill um, but there should never be a point in time where you can't get that class that you want um, i've had friends move their schedules around for different semesters if they really wanted a particular course um, but otherwise you know you you're all you're going to be on a wait list for some of your classes but eventually people will be dropping out and moving to other classes and you'll get in so that was my personal experience you definitely have access to classes especially as you move up as well so you know junior senior year the accessibility to get those classes you really want super super easier than you know that first year trying to take that advanced computer science coding course maybe not your first year but definitely later on Devin go ahead um, yeah, I also wanted to touch on the being able to explore your interests. Um, it is definitely easy, especially as you get into um, like upperclassmen years. Um, that's how I found my minor was when I was studying abroad. I actually, talking about classes, unfortunately, one of the classes I went to Prague for got canceled because the professor ended up not being able to be in Prague anymore. So there was a huge commotion <laughs> and breakdown of a lot of 
you know, staring students about to go to Prague. Um, but in the end, that was a huge blessing. And this guy is because I ended up taking this amazing art and architecture class where I learned all about the architecture of Europe and got to like walk around Prague and learn architecture. Um, and when I got back, I was talking to my counselor and they're like, you have all these extra classes you took while you were in Prague. Um, I'm gonna look around and see if any of them are part of a major, I mean, a minor program. Um, and he found the European and Mediterranean Studies course at, um, minor in CAS and ended up taking another incredible class there. And that was my minor. So it was, you almost trip into incredible interest that you didn't even realize you had until, you know, a crisis happens in your class schedule and you have to fill it with something else. Um, it will sometimes be a big blessing in disguise. Absolutely. So I do want to be mindful of time and also of the fact that our portal will kick us out if we go too far over. So I have one final question for you all. And I think, I think it's a pretty good one to end on. So this is from Navita who is asking, how did living in New York City help you grow as a person and help you achieve your dreams? Dimitri, I saw you mouth wow. You're just like, I, woo. That's a great question. Absolutely. Michael, go for it. I mean, this is the place to be, you know? Like there's no, this, you know, is my New York City bias. There's no better place in the world to be, especially when you're 18, 19, you know, studying, learning, um, going through university. There are so, I, we've, we've all touched on this, but there are so many opportunities here, whether it's Dimitri going to the UN or, you know, Carolyn planning a party on a boat in Manhattan, because that's, an opportunity that you have. Um, further, I think for a lot of people, this will be the place that you may want to work long term. Like there's a lot of industry here. There's a lot of tech here. There's speaking and finance. There's law. Um, and those are really just the things that come to my mind because that's what I'm involved in. So there's there's the arts. Mm -hmm. If you're a student who wants to study the arts, like go up to the Met, you know, go to the opera, go to Broadway. There are so many opportunities that for you to, to further your personal and your academic interests and to develop an amazing career here by taking internships. All of my friends had internships almost every single semester. And I, I can't even imagine, you know, being at a school and not being able to have those opportunities. Um, so I think one, it was amazing for personal development while I was in school, but it also really just launches you onto a career path that will be really fruitful. Thanks, Michael. Anyone have a final last quick kind of answer to it? Carolyn, I'll let, I'll let you close out the Q&A. Okay, <laughs> this is super broad, but I actually use this as my high school senior year yearbook quote, try and fail, but don't fail to try. So if you even have that small inkling of what if or how, like, do I imagine myself here? Can I see myself? If, and if that answer is yes, or even maybe, I look forward to seeing you here and welcoming you to the alumni community in a few years. Thank you all so, so much for spending your Saturday with us, for sharing your experiences with us today. I hope that everyone enjoyed our panel and really had the chance to learn about the NYU student experience from all of these incredible alums and alums Thank you again so much for sharing your stories and making me remember once again why I chose NYU myself and how incredible this community is. So we do encourage you to check out our offerings on our NYU home base, where you can find additional information about admitted student events happening throughout the month of April. And definitely follow us on social media at Meet NYU. We're on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, literally all the social media, follow us so that you can get even more updates. So with that, congratulations again on your offer of admissions. We are so excited to welcome you to the Violet community and thank you all again for attending. Goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>